Are you hungry? And if so, you're in the right place because today we're making shaba mushi and we're gonna top it with a lot of good stuff. Give me something, something good. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Girl Gut. Oh, you heard it already. Shaba mushi topped with tantan, um, katsubushi powder, chili crunch. What else do we have? Nori leaves and spring onions. But before we have a look at the board, if you're not a subscriber to the channel yet, do me the huge favor and hit that subscribe button and check the bell icon so that you get a notification every Tuesday when a new episode is out. But now let's have a look. As you can see, I've already prepped a lot of our stuff, but we'll go through them one by one, so don't worry. Uh, we'll start up here with our spring onions. Anyone knows how to cut it, but I'll show you quickly what, what I did with them. Now for our spring onions, I mean, everyone can do this, right? So just try to cut them a bit slanted. Something like this, and then we put them in ice cold water. That's just to kind of freshen them up a bit, make them a bit uh, crunchier. And that's, that's all we need to do with a spring onion. Simple as that. Our nori. For our nori, it's just basically normal nori that you cut into squares. I'll just show you on these. Let's try to get them more or less straight. But it doesn't matter. But this is what we're after. So that's our nori squares. Or our small nori squares. Again, not rocket science, just cut them small. We have chili crunch. Um, this is something I made in the past. This is a new recipe. It's not online yet, but I'll put the link up here to my old chili crunch recipe, which is almost as good as this one, but not as good. So I will, I will do this on the channel as well later on, probably next year sometime. We have our katsubushi powder. I'll show you quickly how we did that. Again, really simple. And um, well, you see when we do the dashi, well, let's have a look at the dashi now. Our typical dashi ingredients, if you're following the channel, you've seen me done this a couple of times. I have a half a liter of water, 10 grams of kombu. We're first gonna soak that. Then we're gonna bring this to a boil once it's soaked. And then we put the katsubushi in. It's um, 20 grams, so 10 grams, 20 grams, half a liter. Well, we need to wait a little bit, so I'll see you in a second. Our water has boiled. I'll take it off and we put in the bonito flakes. And I will let this soak for, yeah, five to 10 minutes. You can try it after five and see if you want a bit more intense flavor. And then you just have to strain it and that's your dashi. The katsubushi that you use for dashi, you can put it in the oven and dry it out, and then you can put that in the blender instead of the fresh katsubushi, um, and you get this wonderful katsubushi powder that way as well. So just another way to kind of reuse the katsubushi you use for your dashi. Now, the last part that we haven't seen yet is the tantan. Let's have a look at that. Our ingredients for the tantan, I have half a kilo of uh, neko pork, put through the, what do you call it, the mincer twice. We have three onions, four cloves of garlic. We have 40 grams of mirin, 40 grams of sesame oil, and 40 grams of sweet bean paste. And we have some um, sashimi togarashi to spice it all up a bit. We need to chop the onion and the garlic. I'm not gonna show you that because it's quite boring. So what you will see next is when we stand at the stove and all of this comes together to a beautiful tantan. Just some neutral oil in there, or garlic, or onions. Just wanna 
release the flavor a bit before we go in with the meat. Now I can go in with the meat. And don't worry about it being lumps like this. That will, the heat will do the job for you. It just leaves up for a bit now. Get a bit of color. We're at the stage now where we can add in our liquids. So the sesame oil, the mirin. Last but not least, the bean paste. Make sure we get everything out. And we just mix this well. And we'll let this come together for, I don't know, five to eight minutes. And at the end, we're gonna see if we, we for sure want some sashimi togarashi, sashimi togarashi, and probably a bit of salt, but uh, the bean paste has a bit of salt in it, although it's sweet. Um, so we'll see how much we need. I'll see in about uh, five to eight minutes. We'll give this a taste now, see where we stand. Mm. Great. But it needs both sauce. Salt. It needs salt. And we want this a bit spicy. So we'll go in with some sashimi togarashi. Mix this, and I will test it again. Let's see where we are. Hmm. Salt-wise, we're fine, but we need a bit more heat. Mix it all up. If we're there. Ah, that's perfect. So that's our tantan. This is so good. One of my favorite things to eat. But now, all we have left to do is basically make the shavamushi mix, which is classically either done with just water or some kind of stock. So today we're using dashi. But uh, I'll clean this out and then we'll have a look how we mix it. So we just have a mixing bowl, we put our eggs in there and just break them up and whisk them together quickly. Now we need to measure it. And not by weight, but by volume. Three, 300, 300 milliliters. And the, the, the mathematics of it, the equation of it is one part egg to one and a half part liquid. So 300 milliliters of egg, we need 450 milliliters of dashi. Which is probably exactly what we got. And we poured that in as well. And now we just need to mix this together. making four of these today. So I'll just pour it in. Oop. Pour it in, not pour it out. I'll clean this up before I continue. So that we get more or less equal portions. Perfect. And now all that's left to do is to, uh, I have a steamer, so I'm gonna do them there, otherwise use a steaming basket. Uh, put them in, 15 minutes, check them, somewhere between 15 and 18 minutes. So I'll see you when they're done. Well, one thing I'll show you quickly, and that is how to get rid of the bubbles. Just get some heat. I don't have much gas left, but I just wanted to show you this trick. 
can see, they just disappear like that. And this you can do on anything. Um, panna cotta, like a dessert, anything you want to get rid of the bubbles, just get your burner and go over it quickly. You see, it does magic. But now we put them in the steamer. Our shava mush is ready. It was 17 minutes and I think that's pretty perfect. It still has a bit of a wobble to it, but it's set. Now we're gonna serve this up, but before we do that, as always, if you stuck with me this far, there must have been something you enjoyed about the episode. So do me the huge favor and hit that thumbs up button. It's just down there, it takes you a second, but it's so valuable to me, so please do me that favor. But now let's serve this up. And here you can go different ways. Either you can pile it on top of each other, or you can divide it up into, there's was a bit of meat that came there, into like sections, and we're gonna try to do that. Start with the tantan. Like so. And here, I mean, there's no rules, right? You can go whichever order you want. We're gonna mix it a little bit later anyways when we eat it. Some of our katsuboshi powder. And we have our chili crunch. I will go here, maybe a little bit more, because it's so good. And last but not least, our nori. And there we have it. Our shava mushi with lots of good stuff on top. Now let's dig in. Now, this might not be the nicest way of eating it in terms of how it will look, but it's for sure the best way. We go in and we mix a bit. You can start with just the middle and then we go down. Mm. Hot, but incredible. I mean, these are all umami things, right? Ah, so nice. We have to mix it up. Mm. Fantastic. I will go in and mix everything up now. As I said, probably not the most appetizing to look at for you. That's why I'm not filming so much of it. <laughs> but really, ultimate comfort food. Especially now, you know, it's when we're filming this, it's mid November. So it's dark outside now. I started in the afternoon when it was light, but now it's dark and it's cold. We had the first frost this morning. This is really what you need. It's warm, it's warming, it's soothing, it's comfort food. Mm. Fantastic. Mm. And I know it's, it's a dish that if you don't have you know, the chili crunch ready-made, it will take you quite a while to make it and so on and so forth. But if you don't want to make your own chili crunch, you can buy okay chili crunch. You can make it with both chili crunch. Or if you make chili crunch, make a big batch. It keeps for a long time. And then you have just have it in the fridge, take it out and serve it on a dish like this. Because the dish itself, okay, the tantan probably takes 15 minutes, but the rest is really quick. So you could, from start to finish, it's not more than 45 minutes, which is not bad for such a nice, soothing, comforting dish. But uh, that's pretty much it for today. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you have any question, s question or questions, leave them in the comment below. I always answer them. And don't forget, if you're not a subscriber yet, hit that subscribe button and check the bell icon. I'm going to finish this, but I'll leave you to it. 
Take care for this time. Bye-bye.